manager at Chegg, and today I'm going to be talking about the fact that the modern American college student is very different. Different than the college student that we were and that I think we're all familiar with. Uh, so I'm going to be going over two main topics. One, who is today's student? And two, how can we best serve their needs? And all the information I'm going to be covering is about the American market. But before we dive in, what is Chegg? So Chegg is a learning platform with a variety of digital products. We are a publicly held company with offices all over the world. I work in the office here in Israel. And about 87% of American college students are familiar with our brand. And just to give you an example of one of our products, so the one that I lead is called Chegg Study. And it's an online 24-7 homework help platform that offers students two main services. One, we call it textbook solutions. So it's step-by-step -step explanations to problems in the textbooks. And the second offering is called expert Q&A. So it's the ability to ask any question on any tough problem um, and ask it to a subject expert and get an answer within 30 minutes. And both of these services are offered on our platform with a monthly subscription of $14.99. And Chegg's mission is to improve student outcomes by offering uh, learning services uh, more effectively while saving time and money. And our number one value is to put the students first. So Chegg is in a unique position where we have the ability to reach many students to therefore understand industry trends and student needs. So just to give you a few examples, just last year we had four billion page views of our content. We have a little over 10 million unique visitors per month, 8 million registered users, and just in the last few years, our digital subscriber user base has grown by 360%. So what are the industry trends showing us? They're showing us that something about the current education system isn't working. We see that 45% of high school students are dropping out and don't go to college. 37% of those who do go to college drop out and don't graduate. And for those that make it to the finish line that do graduate, their average debt is $37,000. Now, there used to be a safety net for students that did opt out of college. Um, there were job opportunities that didn't require a bachelor's degree. And I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with these jobs. We've probably worked one of them at some point in our lives. But the problem is that these jobs are starting to disappear. In fact, by 2030, 55% of these jobs will be automated. So think about a taxi driver. When Uber first launched, it opened up a lot of new job opportunities, new demand for taxi drivers, but now we're working on autonomous cars. And think about a warehouse worker where we have companies like Amazon that have already built robots to take over some of the main roles and responsibilities of a human. So the safety net that once existed is not going to exist. So it's time to realign and serve the needs of the modern student. Now, when we think of a typical college student, you're probably thinking 18 years old, fresh out of high school, parents are probably still helping to support them, and they don't have a job. At least that's, <laughs> that's how I was when I was 18. However, today's student is very different, and in order to serve them, we need to really know who they are. So this is a comparison between 1970 and now, and we can see that today's student is older, they're more in a minority, they're predominantly female, and two really important statistics to note, 40% of them are working more than 30 hours a week while they're in school, and almost 30% have children. So when we think about a traditional four-year university where you have to live on campus in a dorm or at least near campus and travel to get learning, or even a community college where you think, okay, on average you have about maybe an hour commute there and back, you take at least one class a day, one hour, that already eats up half of your day. So when students have to come to education, it makes it really challenging to balance both. And so today's education system isn't compatible with today's student. In addition, this generation is very different than any other. They don't know a world before Google. Only a fourth of them are completing their homework by hand. They're living on their smartphones. And 70% will have more than $40,000 in debt by the time they graduate. 
So what are the real reasons why we saw a little bit earlier that almost 40% are not graduating college and opting out? Well, we surveyed students and the number one reason is because they needed to work to make money. So like we just mentioned, if they have to choose between earning and learning, and it's really challenging to balance both, they're gonna choose earning money to support themselves and their family, because we see a lot of them have children. So we have a big opportunity to serve a lot more students if we consider their needs and put them first. So how do we do that? Well, students are pretty, pretty much telling us what to do. 55% are using smartphones in addition to their laptops. 60% believe digital learning tools had a positive impact on their performance. And 47% of students have used online tutorials to help them with their homework. So even if these tools aren't available in the current education system or where they're learning, they're finding them elsewhere. So the main message here is we have an opportunity to embrace technology to expand learning. And we have good role models who have embraced technology. So Adobe is a company that reinvented themselves. Uh, a bunch of years ago, at some point, they were about to go out of business. They were focused mostly on being a print shop. And they realized that their customer had changed. And they made the transition from hardware to software. And they decided to move everything to the cloud, reinvented themselves, and their business is still very profitable today. And then we have industry disruption. So Disney was the leader in the entertainment business for many years. And we have a now newer, younger company, Netflix. I know we're all familiar with it. We probably all have an account. And Netflix is almost, if you look at the market trends, has almost caught up to Disney in terms of its overall profit, which is crazy when you think about how young it is. And this is because they recognized there was a new customer and they provided us with exactly what we wanted, something that was more affordable that came to us. And Chegg has actually also lived this experience and survived to tell the story. So back in 2013, we were focused mostly on being a textbook rental company, uh, offering students textbooks for cheaper prices, and 80% of our revenue came from that business. At that time, we had no relationship with our digital customer, we had flat growth and no profit. Now, fast forward to today, 80% of our business revenue is coming from the subscriptions that we offer, the digital products. We have 3.1 million subscribers across all of our sites. We have a very close relationship with our digital customer, and the subscriber growth has grown about 38% year over year. So we also made the transition from hardware to software because we recognized that the customer needs had changed. Now there are companies who didn't embrace technology and while they're still profitable, still valuable, there are other competitors that have disrupted the industry and are pretty much eating their lunch, so to speak. They are the leaders in the industry now. So what's interesting is that the graduate school programs were early adapters of technology. They caught on to the fact that their customer was different and they moved a lot of their programs online. Why? Because they recognized that their students were older, they had other commitments, they also wanted to balance working, um, and they had physical constraints of being able to travel to a classroom and physical constraints of time. And so the graduate programs were pretty much forced to evolve in order to track their student. So now it's time for the undergraduate programs to catch up. We have a big opportunity because we can see the problems that the students are facing and we have an opportunity to solve those. How can we solve them? Through offering unlimited content online, on demand, available on every device, desktop, native apps, um, and reduce the costs and at the end of the day, accelerate time from learning to earning. So I'm circling back to my first slide, which was titled Reimagine Education, and that's because it's time to reimagine education. Uh, who we serve, what they need, why they come, where they engage, and most importantly, to put the students first. So this is the message I wanna leave with you guys, and that's it, thank you. So how do we take the challenge that Kara just showed us and create a company with the right culture to support all of those problems. 
So back in the 90s, there was a DJ called Faithless, and he had a song called God is a DJ. And when you think about it, why God is a DJ? So the DJ sits on the stage, looking on top of his crowd, and if the DJ is good, he will put some music that will make everybody jump to the sound, to the rhythm. So he's like a god in that party. And I argue that today's god is a culture. The culture that we make in a company, actually what makes our people motivated and actually dance to our music and achieve the goals that we want. So how do you do that? I will try. OK. So as a company who is in the education space, we thought about a lot about how we learn students, how they learn, but also how do we as a company learn. And we came up with the idea of brain swaps. So what is brain swaps? Think about you wake up in the morning, you drink your coffee, you go into your car, and in the next stoplight, instead of taking a left, you take a right. And you arrive at a new office, you don't know this office, with a new team and a new culture that still Chegg, it's still the place that you work, but it's a different place. So it's more like um, replacing one of the employees for two months, for two weeks, sorry, um, between the two companies. And something's not. Okay. This creates a mixture of learnings based on technology and method methodology, teams, and the different cultures that you have between the, uh, the companies. So we actually did two of those. We replaced two of our employees for two weeks at a time with different companies. Um, the last one was Monday. And the response was amazing. You can see where the impact was for the employee himself that was replaced. So it's a great place for him to feel making a difference and feel that he has an impact on what he does. He goes to the other company and he has impact also there because whatever he brings from his knowledge in Chegg goes back to the other company. And for the team, it's an amazing experience because they get someone for two weeks. They don't need to change him. They don't need to you know, train him how Chegg works rather than actually seeing Chegg through their other employee eyes. For the company, that's great because you know, when Rodik, one of the employees that we changed, came back to Chegg and I asked him, hey Rodik, how, how was it? And he said, you know, it was great, but I had this experience and I'm, okay, sure. And he said, so I finished all my tasks. It's like my two days before I, I finish everything. And I meet with my team lead and he's asking me like, okay, Rodik, great, you finished everything, what's next? And Rodik says, what do you mean what's next? You tell me what's next. And apparently in Monday, the way they do it is the engineer takes the responsibility of knowing what's next and making sure that he knows what he needs to do before and even suggesting that. So this thing actually created, um, we thought we had a great agile process and we are working you know, with best practices. And we started on this road of redefining roles and responsibilities and taking to, to the next level. So even as in the company, we changed from one sentence that you know, one of our employees uh, came back with, a great change inside the company. And of course, for the community, that's a great um, thing to do because it giving, it's give back something for the learning community because we come from a, a place of education. This is Radic. Uh, he wrote a blog post after the experience. You can actually see that the difference between the companies apparent. You can actually see that in what he writes. 
but he loves the place that he is coming from and he loves the place that he went to. And that's amazing to see you know, someone working for you appreciating another company. So what did we get? So we get engagement. People are more engaged when, they, when you send someone to a different company and he comes back. You can see a lot of the dynamics in the, in the team changes. A lot of improvement also in the team. Comparison between the two companies. Things that, you know, people are saying like, hey, they have more things in their um, refrigerator than us. These are kind of conversations that you'll need to have when you do something like that. But the funny thing is that, you know, one of the feedback I got, again, from um, a replace uh, changing between two employees, my employee came back to me and said, you know, I thought we were like a lot of messy and like a lot of places disorganized, uh, um, but I learned that we are okay. And then I went to the other one and he said the same thing about his company. You know, I thought that we weren't that organized, but I think we are better organized than you guys. And I'm like, <laughs> that's good. Um, but you can see those kind of things and it actually makes you appreciate the place you come from. And that sits with our core values. Again, learning, we are a learning company. We want to learn and we want to educate. And this is where we are. Um, one of the key values that we have is choosing us every day. This means that I know we're in a competitive uh, market and I want my employees to choose Chegg every day. And if they don't choose me every day, then I will be the first one to help them seek out their next role or whatever they want to do. It gives meaning to the company and to the employee himself um, and the teams. They feel proud of this project. They feel uh, a sense of belonging. And again, giving to the community. The project that we are now doing is not only for Chegg. We are actually opening it up to different companies. And we, we want to be the facilitators of com connecting between different companies to do this exchange um, in various positions and not only just engineering. Um, so the site is going to be online and you can go in and register and we would love to help you guys do the same thing for you. This is the site. So I'm finishing in Hebrew. I'm sorry if anyone here. So we always think about how not to say you can't, but say how you can. So I urge you to join. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Good. Thank you.